Live from Schellenberger Field in Lynchburg, Virginia, a heavyweight matchup between two of the best teams inside the Commonwealth of Virginia. University of Lynchburg Hornets play host to the Christopher Newport Captains and what is set to for sure be a fun contest this Friday evening. TJ Winger alongside my broadcast partner, George Diamond. Thank you all for tuning in to this LHSN men's soccer broadcast. And, George, we're going to have our money's worth, no doubt about it. We'll preview this matchup with some stats on the screen here in a moment. But, George, when you were prepping for this game, what were some of the big things that stood out to you? Well, TJ, you're absolutely right. This is going to be a great game, in my opinion. Um, Lynchburg have started the season fantastically. They've scored eight goals through the first two games, only allowing two. That is a high-powered offense combined with a very stout defense. And uh, their opponent this afternoon is also a very strong team. They are nationally ranked and have uh, historically had a very strong program. Um, so I think this will be a great contest, and it should be very entertaining. The eight goals for Lynchburg this year, six different goal scorers. That is remarkable in its own right. And as you mentioned, the captains come in ranked number 22 in the country in the preseason coaches poll. And there are some men's soccer <laughs> national voters in attendance today. So this game has plenty of levity for regional rankings as well as national rankings. And these are two teams that historically have played a lot of close games. Last time they played a match that wasn't a tie or a one-score difference at the end of regulation or overtime. 2014 5-1. That was actually the last time the captains beat the Hornets as well. I was only a freshman in high school back then. Wow. It's been a long time coming. And both sides take the field. We'll introduce the starting lineups. CNU enters at 1-0-1. The win against Covenant College, a common opponent for both teams. 2-0 final in that match. Then a tie against Gettysburg College. 1-1 one, one final score there. Meanwhile, for Lynchburg, a pair of 4-1 victories. First over Covenant College in the season opener a week ago today, and then two days later against Greensboro. That game actually played at CNU. So these two teams, while playing each other for the first time this year, have both seen one another play. So it's interesting to see how that scouting report plays into this one. Brennan Laganen with it at his feet, reigning ODAC Player of the Week. On the season, three goals and an assist. Strong start for the sophomore. Kenny Robles looking for the middle of the box. Has it broken up? Bailey Kearns on the far side. Marked up by Chris Sham. Shram from McLean, Virginia. Does have a goal in the year. So looking at these two sides and what they've done coming into it, High-scoring volume for Lynchburg. Eight goals, as you mentioned, at the Open, George. Just three so far for Christopher Newport. So I think we're going to see a blend of two different styles of how you play the game today. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's going to – I think that uh, CNU is probably one of those teams where they really like to keep it tight at the back and uh, create some high-quality chances. Um, but regardless, you know – uh, whether you're scoring four goals every game or uh, you're winning by one goal, a win's a win, um, and it really comes down to your setup. And Free kick for CNU, far side of the box. With the head on it was Will Collins, senior from Richmond, Virginia, second team all-conference a year ago. Unable to do anything with it. Apologies for some technical difficulties. Looks like we've lost our video feed. Be myself and George taking you through, trying to paint the picture as we sort out those technical issues. Throw in on the far side. Headed away. Possession stays with Lynchburg, working right to left. Throw in coming from Seth Dale. Dale on... The right back spot, 
opposite of Joey Daly. Those two backs, you will come accustomed to seeing them play a big factor in the attack for Lynchburg. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Joey Daly is uh, a great set piece taker for the Hornets. He frequently takes corners, and uh, we know that he's got a cannon for a foot because he uh, scored the first goal of the season for the Hornets in their first game with a long-range strike that found the upper 90 um, against Covenant College. Uh, what a great game that was. I mean, from 24, 25 <laughs> out, high top right corner, and it was an awesome shot. Certainly one for the highlight reel. That puts that much more pressure with Daly and Dale playing further up the field. Griffin Phillips and Nick Foley, two center backs, have to always be ready for an opposing rush. Scrum in the midfield. Clark Chapman has it for a moment for CNU. Skies it forward. Two teams pinball possession in the middle of the field. Manzi Shalita now with it for Lynchburg. Swings it out near side. This is Joey Daly. Back to Foley, one of two grad players on the roster for Lynchburg. Daly gives it all the way back to the other grad, fifth-year player Kyle Gallagher, first team all ODAC last season. Kyle Gallagher is a uh, fantastic goalie. Um, he got, as you just said, he got first team all, all ODAC last season with a .75 save percentage. So he saved three quarters of the shots that he faced. That is a remarkable number. So far this year, just a .56 goal against average. Five saves, 83.3% on the save percentage. Some contact from Dale. He'll be called for the foul. Just past the midfield line. Sent towards the top of the 18. Schramm chases it down, but goes across the end line. And they'll say Schramm the last one to touch it. Seeing you arguing for the corner chance on the far side, but their case falls on deaf ears. Kyle Gallagher will send it away for a goal kick. Apologies as we continue to work through some technical difficulties on our end. As it stands right now, Lynchburg uh, have been holding the ball. Um, they were just looking for a long pass up, and now CNU have recovered possession in the midfield. Welcome back into Schellenberger Field. Free kick for CNU. Finds the feet of Brendan Lagana. Apologies again for our technical difficulties. Foul just before we came back. So fortunately enough, we were able to bring you back the most exciting play while we were down. Overall, it's been back and forth, battling for possession in the midfield. And George, that's sort of what we expected from this one, especially early on, these two tides trying to feel each other out. Yeah, 100%. I think... Uh I expect uh, both of them to grow into the match as the game wears on. 
Um, but yeah, they're finding their feet, trying to get some. Oh, here we go. He might have something here. It's Luke, the ball finds the feet of Luke Mega. Mega works down the center of the pitch. He'll swing it out, looking for Kenny Robles. Now centers. Brennan Lagana in the neighborhood has it swatted away. <laughs> Good move from Robles. Chipped up. Andy Shalita near side of the box. Pass a little strong. That's ultimately good defense from uh, the Covenant defender there. Or excuse me, the captain defender there. That was Trevor Smith, freshman from Richmond, Virginia. Able to slow down Shalita and Lynchburg midfielder last to touch it. So throw in, inbound for the captains. Big swing and a miss from Tanner Dale. Daly back to Foley and over to Griffin Phillips. And you look across this back line for Lynchburg. Seth Dale, a junior. Joey Daly, senior. Griffin Phillips, senior. Nick Foley, grad. <laughs> grad, fifth-year player in the net. I mean, that's as experienced as it gets for a back four-plus keeper for any team inside the ODAC. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's uh – a tr trait that you really want to have in your defense. You want them to be experienced leaders who are able to uh, marshal uh, opposing attackers and just, uh, you know, they're a great unit. I think they communicate well effectively, um, and, you know, they keep each other in the game, and that's what's most important. Tanner Dale picks off the pass, draws the contact from Shalita. Foul called. We'll have a free kick on the way from the captains. Season to go, Lynchburg. Winners of the ODAC. Meanwhile, CNU losing in the CAC championship game. And they didn't actually play in 2020 like Lynchburg did. Lynchburg playing in spring of the academic year. So spring 2021, just a few months ago. Meanwhile, CAC as a conference sitting out of 2020. So the last time the captains were out on the pitch for a full season was 2019. Going 14-2-5. and five. That was the first year under... Now second-year head coach, Justin Chisholm. Right around the six, ball still live. Ricocheted around. Good shot, but deflected off the body of what appeared to be Carter Averett. Now foul called as Brendan Lagana comes away with a loose ball. Lynchburg tries to play the advantage. All the way forward for Kenny Robles. And if you want to talk about someone who has an immense amount of dribbling skills, Robles might be the guy at the top of the list. Had a goal against Covenant where he took on four different Scots defenders, one-on-one, -on -one, taking them down in an order, left-footed strike, found home like nothing to it. It was a beautiful goal. Um, I'm sure he'll be looking to uh, get back on the score sheet tonight uh, one way or the other. We already saw him deliver um, a, good, a good cross after a great uh, dribble move. Um, so I'm sure they're going to be looking – uh, the Hornet midfield will be looking to find him out on the wing and have him either cut in or uh, deliver some more crosses. Daly takes the corner. <sighs> Trying to go back post. Late whistle and a player down for CNU. Oof. Luke Mega appeared to be the intended target. Daly Kearns in the neighborhood as well. I think the ball got to uh, Bailey on that back post, but unfortunately... Uh, it was just a little too high. He couldn't quite get the shot down. Ended up just uh, ricocheting off over the net. Lincoln Kickbush is going to come in for CNU. Exiting the pitch, Tanner Dale. And he's coming up a little lame. Appears to be the person who caught the majority of the blow from that corner. Mm -hmm. The header from Mega. Parlayed ahead for Jonathan Lighting. Looking one more time for Corey Hogue. Pass lands in the center of the box. Nobody's home. Cleared away by Carter Averett. Kearns, strong defense. Brennan Lagana working one-on-one -on -one against Daniel Hewlett. CNU with consistent possession in the attacking third. Deep pass from Daly. Missing long over the head of Mega. Set across the... Near sideline. That's good pressure from Mega. He's uh, forced 
the clearance um, through his pressure, and now the Hornets have the ball again in the attacking third with a throw-in. It was Davis Pillow who sent it across the near end line. One of four grad players on the roster for CNU, first team all CAC in 2019. Has a goal in the year coming against Covenant College. Daly to throw in. Finds Mega, now back to Shalita. Chips it far side of the 18. And headed away by the captains. Lynchburg resets. Phillips over to Foley and back to Phillips. Seventeenth minute of the first half. Mega defended by Lighting. Last time we saw Lynchburg at home against Covenant College, first half in specific, wanted to run the offense through this near side and Luke Mega. And it wasn't until the 43rd minute that the Hornets were able to strike and find the back of the net. It was Joey Daly carrying it all the way forward from that left back spot. But nonetheless, I think that trend has continued into today's match, trying to feed this near side. Players like Shalita, Daly, Mega. Yeah, that's uh, it's almost a stacked left side right there uh, between uh, Mega up top and Daly at defense. And as you said, in the midfield, there's, they've got weapons all over the pitch, really. Entering the day with eight goals, I think another characteristic that stood out early on this year is patience. This Lynchburg team will not rush into an offensive set. They are content. Moving across the back line, here's the center mid, Carter Averett. Looking for Kenny Robles. Pass deflected by the senior, Harry Whittleton. Chipped ahead and long. Gallagher waiting for it. Outstretched arms. Lead looking long, has Robles. Beautiful touch on the deep pass. Throw in for Lynchburg now, Seth Dale, junior from Chesterfield, Virginia. So he talks about how good these programs are, and it really starts with the top down. Two great coaches at the helm for both sides. 19th year for Lynchburg head coach Chris Yeager, and 19th year part of the program on the other side for Justin Chisholm. That dates his time as a player, assistant coach, and as mentioned a moment ago, just his second year as the official head coach. The replacement to longtime head coach Steve Shaw. Yeah, and uh, Justin Chisholm, despite it only being his first season, um, his entire coaching staff, himself included, won the CAC Coaching Staff of the Year Award after a 14-2-5 record. So, I mean, I think being able to step in and, and do so well as a program to be rewarded like that in your first year speaks volumes about um, your ability to coach and really uh, get the most out of your team. Good ball forward. This is Kickbush. Defended by Phillips. Good play from Kearns. Takes it away. Give and go. Swatted back towards Lynchburg end line. Goes Sounds across like the sideline. Yeah, that does not sound fun to be hit by. No, those balls are harder than they look. <laughs> but Bailey, Kearns has been uh, putting out all kinds of fires thus far into the first half. Um, it's really important to have that. Uh, quality if you're playing midfield uh, to be able to break up attacks and win the ball back, retain possession, start an attack. Um, might not show up on the stat sheet a lot, but glue guys are incredibly important. In a lot of ways, the ways you can use Kearns, he feels like a queen on a chessboard. He's <laughs> played some forward, he's been in the midfield, he's played those back positions across the back line. Chris Yeager has deployed him in a number of different roles, and Bailey Kearns just Happy to be playing, doesn't care about a certain position, and has gelled into whatever role Coach Yeager's needed him to fill. And early on this year, it's been in that midfield spot. He's played some good defense early in the season. Been a factor on 
Couple of runs, does have a goal on the year. That came against Greensboro. To the box, headed away by Foley. Popped up by a few different players now. Near side, Owen Burnett had it for a moment. And Jonathan Lighting will throw in, finds Burnett. Excuse me, makes that Hogue. Robles and Averitt bump into one another. Chapman swings it out to the far side at the foot of Dudley. Dangerous ball right around the six. Gallagher moves out, gobbles up the pass. Looked like Kickbush was the intended target for the captains. Lots of contact from Mega. It'll be called for the foul. Talking about Luke Mega, no goals this year, but his assist on the first of two goals from Brennan Lagana a week ago today mm. was one of the crispest pass I have <laughs> ever seen in person. Pinpoint couldn't have put it any more to the left or right without making that play not happen, essentially. That's really impressive for a guy who nine goals a season ago. Long free kick ends up in the hands of Gallagher. Yeah, Luke Mega is a player who uh, – I would say possesses a a large amount of technical ability. Um, you know, he can beat you on a dribble. He can play a a great pass, or and he's obviously got quite an eye for goal. Um, wonderful asset to have as part of your uh, front three. And doing so, while well, size may not be the most important factor, especially when you're in that uh, aggressive forward spot, only five foot nine. Mm. And I think that's something else that it's really intriguing when you look at these two sides. Over 50% of the roster for CNU stands over six foot. Dangerous ball. Lagana nearly gets to it, but about a step away. And ultimately lands it in the hands of Cole Irvin. But to continue that point, this is a tall CNU roster. Number of players over six foot, and that's something that stood out when talking to Coach Yeager and Reigning ODAC player of the week, Brennan Lagana. While they were watching film and seeing CNU play this past weekend, they noted this is a big squad, D1 level type of stature for a lot of these CNU players. That's not to say Lynchburg's small, but when it comes to height, the advantage has to be with the captains. Yeah, absolutely. Just as you were pointing that out, actually, um, the captains made a sub and they put in number 35, Owen Burnett, who six, stands at 6'4", six which is uh, basically makes him the tallest outfield player out there right now, if I'm correct. So, yeah, you're 100% correct. If they can launch some crosses in, they'll have a slight height advantage. It's, uh, it, you know, it helps. It helps. The throw in went to Burnett on that play, <laughs> unable to convert on the pass, but nonetheless, they... Put in the tall guy and start feeding him. You watching <laughs> basketball or <laughs> watching soccer? It's funny how some of those traits do carry over from sport to sport. Mm -hmm. Burnett does have an assist on the year, so it does have a point. That came against Gettysburg. Product of Pennington, New Jersey. And looking at the overall roster size for CNU, that is something else that stood out to me. 40 players technically on roster. Mm. You compare that to Covenant, who was here last Friday against Lynchburg. Not including keepers, five to six subs, and they were playing three games in a four-day stretch. <laughs> that will not be a problem that CNU has at all this year. They will have plenty of answers on the bench ready to take the field and make an impact. Yeah, absolutely, especially considering uh, they're playing tomorrow, actually. Mm -hmm. so Both sides. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a busy, you know, it's a busy weekend for sure. So I expect there will be a certain amount of rotation um, so that players don't get too worn out, depending on how the game goes, of course. Hogue patient, leaves it behind for Chapman. One more pass, here's Burnett. There he is Burnett. And cleared away by Averett. Still at the attacking third mark for CNU. Headed towards the middle of the box. Nothing doing. Gallagher to it. Only one official shot today. 
comes for CNU, but that is not to say we have been without action so far. Both teams have put together quality runs, just hasn't formed into the shots, shots on goal. But I think that's part of the beauty. If you're watching this game and you're not necessarily the biggest soccer fan, this is something you'll learn to appreciate as Irvin comes out and gets that loose ball. But yeah. watching the game just slowly unfold, it's it's very much more of the, the smoker approach, right, uh, as opposed to just throwing something in the microwave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oftentimes uh, – Soccer games are, are slower burns, um, mm -hmm. but there's something beautiful, I think, in the fluidity and just being able to watch a game unfold for 90 minutes with very little interruption. You can really get a good sense of the progression of and the momentum shifts and uh, the different uh, little storylines that can happen during a game. Um, I mean, that's what makes it personally my favorite sport uh, and many people worldwide <laughs> as well. The struggle is... Something to behold, no doubt about it. Leiden, lighting, excuse me, throws in for CNU. That's Ricochet all the way back. Taken away by Mega. Takes it over to Shalita. He has it ripped right back. It's Ethan Larson making the play. Dale defending. Gets some help from Griffin Phillips. Trying to slow down the oncoming rush from Colin McMunn. Still without a score, 17 and a half minutes left in the first half. In a heavyweight battle. As mentioned at the top of the broadcast, last time these two teams played and it wasn't either a tie or a one score difference when the final whistle blew. 2014, that was actually the last time CNU beat Lynchburg. 5-1 final score since then. It's been a pair of one goal, Lynchburg wins in OT. Loose ball in the box, waiting to it. Comes set at his foot. Mason Field takes the shot. Doesn't make the cleanest of contact, so relatively easy save for Gallagher to make. But to continue that point, a couple of one goal wins in OT for Lynchburg during that duration, but also a couple of ties, including the last time these two teams met in 2019. Good clear there from Lynchburg. Opportunity to catch your breath. You have CNU deep into your defensive third. Get inside the box. One of the better chances we've seen early on. Now you get a chance where it's all the way back to Urban on the other end and you can kind of reset. Yeah, as a defender, that's not something you would want to see when there's uh, three or four uh, captains in your box with a bouncing ball there that could fall to anyone. But they did a good job, the Hornets, of clearing it and uh, stopping that attack. Phillips. Whiffs on the clear attempt. Has to send it all the way back to Gallagher. Finds Shalita in the midfield. Good slide tackle coming from Larson. Daly parlays it forward for Mega. Back once again. That footed strike. Now popped up by Irvin. Side, both sides wait for it. Rolls all the way up the near sideline and now rolls out of play. Second home game of the year for Lynchburg. They enjoyed it last Friday and getting to enjoy it again today. Good crowd starting to accumulate on the far side, both on the track, but also Westover Hall and the decks. Great spot to watch a game from. I think we're going to have to move a broadcast out there. <laughs> Let them try to make that happen sometime this season. Yeah, it's a great view. It really is. Comfortable chairs over there as well. There's a couple grills that people were mm, using yeah, last yeah. Friday. Uh, yeah, we could. Uh, we absolutely have to set up a, a game broadcast over there. We can have a grill break during halftime, you mm -hmm. know, get the grill, cram <laughs> grill cam back on. Oh, man. I'll talk to some people. Yeah, we yeah. can make we'll this happen. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Give and go between Averett and Gallagher. Here's Foley. Daly has the pocket picked. Come on, come on. 
Kearns heads it out right around the 18. Lands at the feet of the sophomore, Brennan Lagana. Good move, works towards the near sideline. Shalita over to Kearns. Poked back to Averitt. Now Lagana. Good play. Made by number 19, Mason Field. It was a crunching tackle, but he got all ball. Strong carry forward. Phillips barely gets ahead on it. And Averitt, fantastic job winning the possession for Lynchburg. Averitt plays one of those positions as a center mid where not likely to garner a whole lot of goals, may not even get a whole lot of assists, but someone that may go unseen in the box but plays such an important position and almost always would be out there. Full 90, full 110 if we're going to overtime. Averitt plays such a crucial role but often gets overlooked. It's the curse of uh, playing that center midfield role. You know, a lot of the uh, work, but not as much recognition as maybe some of the more flashier forwards. Um, but so it goes. As Coach Matt Newton on the broadcast last week described it, the forwards get all the nice cars and get all the girls, <laughs> but center mids, they control every possession. Every scoring play almost assuredly had the ball start at their feet. And they engineered it and made it happen. Aforementioned Averitt. Passes forward for Lagana. Lagana absorbs plenty of contact, scrapping with Davis Pillow. Our two players to watch going head to head, <laughs> just like we drew it up. <laughs> yeah, a couple of big brains in the booth tonight. But, uh, <laughs> Too much credit. <laughs> Refs seem pretty content to let them uh, have at each other right there. There are some hands on that, but. I honestly like to see that from the referee. You know, it's a physical game, and I think as long as uh, uh, the what is a foul and what is not a foul is consistent throughout the game, then fans, spectators, and players alike shouldn't have much to complain about. And I think especially in a matchup like this where this game has so much riding on regional rankings, national rankings, CNU comes in number 22 in the coaches' poll, you have to let the players decide. Yeah. As long as it's nothing malicious, you have to let it play. Gallagher comes out and appears to trip up Jason Laviola. Yeah, Late thankfully the, uh, the AR there had uh, flagged his – he raised his flag to indicate offside. Um, ref was going to let that uh, play out before calling it back, and I think Gallagher actually did trip up the fur there. So if that had been a live ball, we probably would have seen him have to s face a penalty kick. Um, but thankfully, the uh, the Hornets' back line had stepped up and um, prevented that from occurring for them. Aviola, one of the subs we've seen CNU make through the match in the first half. Just under 11 minutes left in the open set, opening set of 45. Current with plenty of space in front of him. Looking for Mega. Good Pin ball forward. Ball. And broken up inside the box by Daniel Hewlett. One of four fifth-year players for the captains. But just like that, you see CNU dominating possession. They're essentially living in the attacking third, it felt like. And then in five seconds, switches back the other way. Yeah. And you'll have a corner inbound for the Hornets. A couple of substitutions to go with it. Cesar Acosta comes in, as does Liam Lavelle. Goal and assist this past Sunday against Greensboro. I'm sure he'll be buzzing to get back on the score sheet as well. That's, uh, that's a good performance. To the six, Shalita oh. <laughs> nearly has it, but then the shot from Lavelle almost gets into the scoring column. Yeah. This is just barely wide with a left-footed strike. The captains answer the call. We tied up nil-nil. Goes down as the first official shot of the day for Lynchburg. Yeah, the captain's defense has been uh, very tight, even on that uh, 
that counterattacking play that led to uh, to the Hornets' first corner there. That was uh, it was broken up uh, expertly by their center back there, who uh, laid out to get on the end of their cross, which would have, if it found the feet of uh, the Hornets' player, that would have almost certainly been a goal. So even though it's only the Hornets' first shot, it's not to say that they haven't been involved or in this game. Lavelle fields it off the chest and cleared out with authority. Whew. Ricocheting off of... Takes three Billings. bounces off Freer Hall there. Always makes me clench up a little bit. I'm worried one of those <laughs> balls is going to go through a window. <laughs> I've seen it happen. <laughs> Looking for Shalita. Punched out by Irvin. Acosta gives chase. But CNU wins the possession with pace forward as field. Acosta tracking him down, walking the tightrope along the far side field. Makes it all the way to the attacking third. Are we a throw in for the captains? <laughs> for a second, that reminded me of uh, Gareth Bale against Mark Bartra in the Champions League there. Was, uh, he Bale, was a good player to be compared to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, he knocked that ball third, and he was running outside the lines there. Um, drew the foul there. That was a, a great run by him. Jason LaViola. With the honors to take the free kick. Looking for tall frame of Burnett. Hard to imagine saying this, but sails over the head yeah. <laughs> of the six foot four junior. But that is the case. Just a shade too high. If only he was uh six five and not six four. Right. So it'd be a throw in. Coming for Lynchburg. And we showed some stats entering the contest, and it's pretty even. More goals on the year for Lynchburg, but I, I'd say that's more generated by the play style compared to what CNU has been playing against Covenant and then Gettysburg College. But the other stats reflected evenly matched, and that's exactly what we've seen through almost 40 minutes of game time now. Patrick. Yeah, they're um – they are very tight matches, aren't they? Um, I think the captains have probably did their homework and were aware of how many goals uh, Munchburg has scored. So I think they're they're probably a bit anxious to cover their lines, make sure that they weren't going to be uh, conceding a few early on. Um, they've done their job well. Back where we were just a moment ago, Daly throwing in on the near side. Patrick Picanas looking for Lavelle. Anzi Shalita wins possession just for a moment. And Shalita in that midfield spot. Roster lists him, lists him at 5'11", but he is somebody who long strides and just seems to have a nose for the ball, always around the action. And if it's a loose ball and it's at his feet, He's coming away with it, and that's definitely what we saw last Friday, but I think that trend has continued into this match. He's got a real engine. Uh, I think he just gives 100% um, effort on every play, um, you know, whether it's a forward run or trying to recover the ball. I've seen him dive into tackles just as often as I've seen him uh, skip around a player with a quick move. And he had an assist last Friday against Covenant, and it was a ball in the midfield. He was the first one to it, and those long strides carried him all the way forward, found Brennan Lagana, who – Finished the play off with his second goal on the afternoon. Costa hits the deck. Slide tackle from Phillips. Ball still loose. Field has it taken away from behind. Carter Averett has been in, has played every minute so far. Sebastian Quiros Gutierrez not on the same page with Picanas. Averitt working one-on-one -on -one against Burnett. Again, we see some of the contact continue. Robles chips it over to Picanas. Lighting 
There to slow it down. And Picanos would have been a fantastic finish. But it misses high and wide. And realistically speaking, I think if that shot is on frame, look like Cole Irvin was there to make the play. Yeah, Cole Irving, uh, I think he had his lines covered there. Um, Pickinus was able to get all kinds of uh, spin, top spin on that. Um, and it really got the dip on that. But it was just a little – I actually thought it went in because it hit the uh, – From our angle here, I can see that, I was like, yeah. that hit the back of the net. But, uh, no, it's just a bit wide. Um, but Irving is, a, is an accomplished goalie. Um, and some of the older members on the Lynchburg team might remember um, because back in the day in 2018 – um, he was a freshman at Emory and H, and as a Hornet, he made 18 saves against the then, or excuse me, 12 saves against the then nationally ranked Lynchburg team. So he'll be looking to repeat that performance tonight. Strong run for CNU, ends with an offside. Here's another look, the shot from Picanos, and it's really impressive, one outside the box, but 360, pulling the trigger, not even thinking about it. And didn't miss the frame by all that much. And that's someone who's coming off the bench as a sub. What a nice spark plug you could throw in. Players like Picanas, but also Liam Lavelle in that mix as well. No shortage of offense once you're getting towards the end of the first half and you're looking to give your starters a bit of a break. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, they did come on and they immediately uh, were involved. So I think that um, – not only do the Hornets have weapons all over on the field, but they're able to draw from their bench as well, which is a, a very um, important asset to have at your disposal. Lavelle versus Field. Field heads it right in the direction Carter Averett. Two teams scrum for possession with two minutes and counting left in the first half. Played forward. Nothing doing for the captains there. Costa swings it out wide for Seth Dale. And this is right around the time mark where Joey Daly broke the scoring a week ago today against Covenant. And yeah. This is that momentum time frame where if you were to steal one here going into the break, it would do wonders for your spirits. And then overall, the tone of this game would be played with in the second half. Yeah, it's absolutely massive if you can get a goal right before the half. You get all the momentum behind you coming out of the break. Um, and on the other hand, you know, you really don't want to be in a position where you're giving up a goal right before the break. Sent deep. Lots of contact. Gallagher hits the turf. He was going one-on-one -on -one with Chris Gabarini. Less than a minute to go. Don't suspect we'll see Gallagher in too much of a rush here. Sending it away. So a hard fought first half from both sides. Only three shots between the two teams, but that's not to say we haven't had plenty of action and lots to enjoy. Foul call. Looks like it'll go against Shalita and... Dan, you <laughs> takes over. Much to the displeasure of the Hornets bench. Yeah, uh, the referees actually come over and just uh, very politely told them to settle down a bit. Um, yeah, Manzi's boot just caught uh, the captain's player on the head um, as he was leaning in for the ball. Um, Deflected off the foot of Foley, and what a way to bring it close to the first half in a heavyweight battle between CNU and the University of Lynchburg. Nil-nil your score from Schellenberger Field. We'll step aside and recap the first half after a few words, all here on LHSN. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom. 
but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic in Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams, helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. Celebrate the soggy shoes and the slow starts. Celebrate the lessons learned along the way. These are the wins. Not the shiny nail biting kind. These are the last a lifetime kind. Cheer for the stumbles. The he should have had that. And the tears that linger. For in those moments, greatness lies. There you will find the provoked, the determined, the unified. It's in those moments that champions are born. If you want to know your customers, shop where they shop. Live where they live. And spend time with them as neighbors. With over 100 local offices, Virginia Farm Bureau agents are part of your community. If you want insurance from a company that knows you, get to know us. Today's ODAC Championship broadcast is brought to you by Virginia Farm Bureau Insurance. Keep Virginia, Virginia. Talk to your local insurance agent today. Chantel, the official telecommunications provider of the ODAC. And Field Turf, the official field of the ODAC. I was looking for a school that could provide me with the athletics, yes, academics to pursue my career, a wind symphony to pursue my passion for music, and really have a nice uh, general atmosphere. The professors here are really unique, they, their background and their passion for teaching. It's really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Lynchburg gives you the opportunity to fail, but also get back up in that period of time and, and learn from your mistakes. I can make these mistakes within the school environment, but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when you graduate. Welcome back to Schellenberger Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. Hornets and captains, nil-nil after the first set of 45. TJ Wingard alongside my broadcast partner, George Diamond. We'll show you some highlights throughout the opening set of 45. May not have been a whole lot of shots, but I still think there was plenty to be excited about. And this one felt like a heavyweight fight. Both sides feeling each other out. There's a lot of physical play as well. And overall, I think a very enjoyable watching experience. 
Yeah, absolutely, TJ. I think there's a lot in, uh, there's a lot of interesting things going on in the midfield as they're battling for dominance. You see players on both teams really stepping up, trying to win the ball back and get something going for their team. And hopefully in the second half, we'll see those uh, half chances turn into full chances with a lot of shots on target. And I think now is a really interesting spot because this is where Coach Yeager, Coach Chisholm really get to put their hands on this and see what type of adjustments come out of the first half. I think something else that was interesting is how subs were used. Mm. Seeing you with a very deep roster and you have players who come out like Ethan Larson, we called his name a number of times. Mick Munn was at the top of the attack on a few different occasions. Mason Field was everywhere in the midfield, no pun intended. And then the other side, Liam Lavelle had a couple of chances. Uh, Patrick Pecunis also had some good looks. So while the starters were impressive, both sides have not been afraid to use their bench and gotten some quality play from that second unit, if you want to call it that. Yeah, exactly. That can make all the difference over the course of a game. It's, uh, you know, 90 minutes is a long time. So to have people who can come in and immediately get involved is an asset. We'll step aside, come back, and show you some stats from the first half. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Lynchburg and Christopher Newport on LHSN. I was looking for a school that could provide me with the athletics, academics to pursue my career, a wind symphony to pursue my passion for music, and really have a nice uh, general atmosphere. The professors here are really unique, they, their background and their passion for teaching. It's really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Lynchburg gives you the opportunity to fail, but also get back up in that period of time. and and learn from your mistakes. I can make these mistakes within the school environment, but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when you graduate. in the dream. USA, Mexico. That was so exciting. Lynchburg really stood out for me just because of the way it treated its students. They really do make an effort here. And I've learned that over my four years is that they actually do try to listen to what the student body wants. And they try to act on that. They don't really just give you a piece of paper here to then go off and do your own thing. They actually prepare you to like work with different populations, which is what the world is all about. It's just working with people that are different than you. They genuinely care that everyone has the ability to go off into the world and make a difference with whatever they like. Um, for me, that's just being basically in a room with someone helping them achieve their first goal of, I don't know, doing a pull up. I actually do believe they want you to do the best you can to change someone's life for the better. You can be anyone here, which I think is really cool. But regardless of who you are here, they will make sure you don't fall through the cracks, which is awesome. I have realized that I've never felt lost here. I will not regret ever coming here, that's for sure. Um, so I'm very glad that I came here. Yeah, it's actually pretty awesome. Welcome back to Schellenberger Field in Lynchburg, Virginia. Hornets captains tied nil all at the break. Minutes away from the second half getting underway. We'll show you some stats recapping the first half of action. Very evenly fought battle just as we had anticipated. No safes for either side. No shots on goal. I think that speaks to what we saw. Three total shots, but a lot of it was feeling out one another and seeing how each back line will react to certain set pieces, how the corners have looked, things of that nature, setting up for someone's going to have to break through here in the second half. So we hope at least. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, even those two offsides for Christopher Newport have come from uh, the Hornets back line stepping up and doing well to prevent a possible uh, chance from their countering. So I think these sides um, are both uh, great at defense and are. Sure. Uh, this is going to be a game that's won in the midfield. Um, whichever team's midfield can step up and really 
um, retain the ball and create opportunities for their forwards will um, be the victor. And you look at the experience on both teams' back line. Davis Pillow, fifth year. Daniel Hewlett, fifth year for CNU. Two guys have had their hands full all game long. And the other side, we've talked about Nick Foley, fifth year. Mm. Uh, Griffin Phillips, senior. Yeah. Seth Dale, junior. Joey Daly, senior. This is kind of what you would expect when you look at that and that experience and those two specific units and only two corners as well. Like It's not only that there hasn't been a whole lot of chances inside the attacking third, though Jods have done a good job clearing away properly and yeah. limiting those set pieces. Yeah, I mean, there have been a lot of half chances. Um, so it's really just – it might even come down to just one, you know, one or two moments in front of goal where just the forwards have got to be switched on because, you know, 89 minutes of good soccer – uh, can all go to waste if you give up one opportunity at the end of the game. So, and the sir, the first half certainly gives you that indication where this this game feels like it's going to come down to one specific mm -hmm. moment, and that will be the difference. We're going to step aside one final time, come back and talk about some adjustments both teams can make, and then carry into the second half of action between the Hornets and the Captains here on LHSN. The biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, uh, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. Less than a minute away from the second half between the University of Lynchburg and Christopher Newport. Set to ensue. Nil-nil your score. It's TJ Winger alongside my broadcast partner, George Diamond on hand. Been treated to a really fun, physical, not a lot of shots, mm -hmm. no score obviously, but still entertaining match between the Hornets and the Captains so far today. Both teams enter without a loss, looking to keep it that way. Yeah. What are some of the adjustments you think both teams need to make, starting with CNU? Well, I think the captains don't need to change much starting from the back of the field. Um, they're very tight at the back. They did a great job limiting the opportunities. I think that if I were them, if I was in that coaching staff, I would look to change something uh, with the forward core um, or just the tactics that they're using. I think that they need to find a way to just unlock the Hornets' defense because the chances that they've had – have either been uh, called for offside or um, they haven't been able to get a clear shot. We've seen a couple of scuffed shots. Um, they really need to create a clear scoring opportunity if they want to win this game. And for Lynchburg? I mean, honestly, it's uh, pretty similar. These teams have, have uh, 
matched out pretty well and even. It's um, I think again uh, they need to be able to. Uh, they just need to. Li the Hornets should probably try and keep finding their wingers. I think they did a, a really. Uh, they did a good job early finding a Morales out wide and uh, finding the feet of Mega. And if they can really uh, get it to them and have them take on um, the defenders of the captains, it can open up the game or create more space um, for their center forwards and attacking mids. Um, and that way, hopefully, they'll be able to generate some more offense. And that's where I think you have to give a lot of credit to CNU. They did a good job of limiting the amount of times we could say Luke Mega's name and Kenny mm, Robles' yeah. name. They did a good job taking possession away right at the midfield line. And it was we don't have the possession percentages or anything, but I'd venture to say it's pretty close to 50-50. A little bit of a game of runs. There were moments, five-minute stretches maybe, where one side controlled the game and the pace, and then the other team had it back for a similar duration of time. But overall, that was just even a 45 minutes of action I've ever seen. And that's what you'd expect. CNU comes in ranked number 22 in the country, and there are eyes who have say on regional and national rankings in attendance today. Lynchburg, 2-0. Feels like they're making an argument and knocking on the door of becoming a team that becomes ranked. Meanwhile, CNU, 1-0-1, already ranked, looking to stay that way. Yeah, <laughs> we do have some uh, – this is this will could prove to be a significant game ranking-wise, you know. So I think uh, they're both looking to have a high-quality performance. And it's also bragging rights. These two teams yeah. continuously play close games, and – D3 schools who were powerhouses in this sport in specific, not too far away from a, from one another. There's a lot on the line here just for pride purposes as well. Free kick for CNU. Sent to the top of the box. Lands at the feet of Luke Mega. And you see the pace that he has carrying yeah. it forward towards midfield. Looking long for Lagana. Good shove in the direction towards Mason Field. Ultimately rolls across the end line. That was great strength by Field to just use his body. Uh, he didn't even need to touch the ball. He just wanted to shield it out. He knew it was going to uh, it was the last touch by a Hornet. So one of the goal kick, great job shielding it out. Field a sophomore from Percival, Virginia. And to continuing to build on what we were just talking about and how good these two sides are in their respective right. Mega cuts me off, creates a chance. 360 spin. Continues to dribble by himself. Now draws a second defender. Sends it right into the bleeding hands of Cole Irvin. But to continue my point now. <laughs> CNU picked to win the Coast to Coast Conference in the preseason poll. Keep in mind they lost in the championship CAC in 2019 to Mary Washington. That game went into PK's 4-3 final there. I mean, it doesn't get any closer than that. Meanwhile, Lynchburg won the ODAC last year, picked to finish second in this year's preseason poll. All that to say, again, these two teams are as talented as it gets at the D3 ranks. Will Collins with it for a moment. Lagana absorbs plenty of contact from Hewlett. Whistle blown, goes against the captains. Yeah, that's, uh, I'd say that was a pretty clear foul. Um, you know, it was one thing earlier in the first half, we saw a lot of, you know, some kind of scrappiness, a little bit of hands from both players, but uh, I think. <laughs> um, he was just pulled down there. Um, didn't see much complaints from, from the captains either. Lagana chips it for Mega. Flip back up. Bailey Kearns has it for a second. Now cleared away by Hewlett. And Lynchburg forced to reset. And it's also interesting when you think about this matchup in regards to what it does moving forward. Both these teams play tomorrow. And this is such a hard-fought battle. And who knows, maybe we're going to overtime. Maybe everybody's playing yeah. that much more today. And for Lynchburg, now we're up to Lexington, Virginia, to take on 
Washington and Lee in a non-ODAC game. First of two meetings the two teams will have this year. Meanwhile, CNU will be taking on Methodist University. And as someone who just is not in shape to be able to do this anymore, I can only imagine playing full 90 or close to it and then packing your bags, hitting the road, and doing it all again tomorrow. I mean, credit to all the student athletes on the field. That is no easy task. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, not, like I said before, 90 minutes is a long time, and, I mean, you're going to end up running a lot in this game. Um, I mean, that's, I think that's got to be on the, the back minds of the coaching staffs here today. Um, we've already seen um, many subs uh, go in and out, um, and, I mean, especially if it ends up going into overtime, I'm sure that we'll see some more rotation. And then after tomorrow, both teams do get a break. They'll both be playing road matches a week from today on the 17th, Lynchburg against Oglethorpe and CNU against the University of Chicago. Into the box, Griffin Phillips there. Last man standing between the onset rush from the captains. Still a 2-1 shot advantage for CNU. No shots on goal for either side. Carrying forward is Whittleton. Slide tackle from behind. Will Collins had it, was prepping to take the shot. A good play, it looks like Bailey Kern sliding in and sends it right to Kyle Gallagher. Long pass forward for Mega. He stays on side. Wants Lagana, and this is a similar point of attack to what we saw in the first half where Lynchburg tries to play through the wings and then is looking for Lagana at top of the formation, spearheading the attack. Didn't create a whole lot of opportunities, but early on in the second half, they've had their runs, and again, like we said during halftime, this game feels like it's going to come down to one game, one moment, yeah, one player taking advantage, and that may well be the difference. Yeah, I mean, if uh, if Luke Mega can keep running at that outside back and uh, if he can create some space, he'll have, uh, I think he'll find enough time to find the feet of uh, Lagana. But as of now, um, he's uh, the captain's doing a good job closing him down and preventing that from happening. Shram looking for lighting. Gallagher there to intercept. Keeper tosses forward. There's the aforementioned Mega. Junior was first team all ODAC last spring. Dale DeMega tries to back heel it up the field. Well defended that time. Looking for the foul there, but refs got absolutely uh, no. <laughs> no say on the matter. Yeah. <laughs> it was Clark Chapman marked up against Mega. Those two have been going at each other all day long. Here's Chapman in the vicinity as Kenny Robles can't handle a high pass. Dudley to Schramm, poked away by Averitt. Chapman and Robles. Watch it roll across the sideline, last touched by Clark Chapman, second team all CAC in 2019. See a look at the play where Mega hit the turf. No foul called. You be the judge back at home. <laughs> and we talk about the players and how much running they're doing. It'll be easier being a referee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, plenty, plenty running there. Yeah, you're And then you're the point of blame as well for anything that happens. <laughs> someone's upset with you. So maybe even less desirable than having to run up and down the pitch like these players are. I'm sure. Refs have a game tomorrow, too, so shoot, credit to them as well. Dudley feeds back to the middle. Here's Chapman, picked up by Shalita. Lots of contact, and Hornets midfielder called for the foul. Chapman hits the floor. Free kick from distance, but 
in a game with a premium on scoring opportunities, this is one you can't take lightly. Here's another look at it. And you can see the <laughs> hip check there from Shalita. Yeah, he wasn't quite able to uh, <laughs> to get the ball there. Um, correct call, I think, from the referee. Two-man wall. <laughs> and this shot sails up and over the post and will roll all the way to Turner Gymnasium. I was just thinking uh, that the distance that is, I was thinking they're absolutely going to try and deliver this in and get ahead on it. Um, but uh, he's gone for goal there, and it did not pay off, unfortunately, for him. It was Will Collins, senior from Richmond, Virginia, second team all-conference in 2019. Ended the day with three shots and now has starts in all three matches for CNU. And to that point, we've seen the starting 11 all three times that the captains have taken the field. Phillips gives chase <laughs> and ultimately cleared away towards the Lynchburg sideline. Got to be, got to be awake. <laughs> Even if you're not playing, you don't know what's going to come your way off the foot of Seth Dale. A decent audition for goalie by some of the Hornet subs <laughs> there. He got his hands up quick. Good give and go from Shalita Robles. Now sent towards the back line of the captains. Hewlett comes across the field. The two teams just scrapping for possession. And here at the onset of the second half, a little more than 10 minutes played, it feels like these two teams not only still feeling each other out, but looking for any possession that lasts more than just a few fleeting moments. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is uh, definitely something of a, uh, a more tactical battle, I would say, than uh, sometimes soccer can be a very high-scoring affair. But this game, I think the draw is more of the, the battle in the midfield and what the coaches are trying to do, how are they going to unlock the other's defense? And I think when you look at a game where it could be nil-nil with just under 34 minutes left until the end of regulation, it could be done in a couple different ways. You could have a situation where one team is dominating possession and the other side is just packing it in. Eight, mm -hmm. nine players in the box. This yeah. one sails over the post. But today, it's been so evenly fought with possession and been such a scrum in the midfield where it has been one side dominating possession by yeah. any stretch of yeah. the imagination. Haven't seen that many looks, and it's been that type of nil-nil contest as opposed to war of attrition. We're going to pack it in and hope to have a run the other way, which, you know, personally, I find this nil-nil score a little more entertaining. First corner of the day for CNU doesn't bear any positive fruit. Instead, goes all the way back to the back line. Loose ball actually. Ends up with sophomore Brennan Lagana. One on two, breaks to the left. The shot oh. forces Irvin to lay out, but the fifth year player from Charlottesville, Virginia, answers the call. Comes away with a save. And it was great uh, awareness from Lagana off the corner to just have um, the wherewithal to spot the, uh, the loose ball and just force a turnover there, he just picked it up really and just ran with it for about 40 yards and then uh, busted off a shot. Here's another look at the opportunity from Lagana and the save from Irvin. Lynchburg keeping up the pressure though. This one rolls across the near sideline. It'll be a throw in for the captains. Now a 5-2 shot advantage for CNU. And per the official live stats, two saves for Gallagher to one for Irvin. Oh, Ooh, that one directly oh. off of the head. Oh, you do, oh. Not, you do not like to see that. That was, a, that was a hard hit he took to the head. From the ball, there was no contact from the player, um, but the way he went down there, it, mm, Lincoln Kipbush down on the turf, senior from Arlington, Virginia. 
certainly a scary play. Yeah. And he is being treated to yeah. by the trainers. Yeah, I think he's going to have to come off, actually. I, I think that was uh, might be a – well, I don't want to speculate, but we'll see. Certainly a situation we want to play it safe rather than be sorry with yeah. Dick Bush. As both teams take a pause, we will as well. We'll step aside and come back with play. When it resumes, you're watching the Hornets and the Captains on LHSN. Welcome back to Schellenberger Field. Only a quick break. Leakin Kickbush able to walk off under his own power. Hopefully all is well with the senior from the Northern Virginia area. Credit to the athletic trainers here at the University of Lynchburg. Quickly coming to the aid of Kickbush and working with him on the sideline. So Kickbush comes off. And play will resume here in now, pretty much. 31 and a half minutes left until the end of regulation. And it was good to see Kickbush able to walk off. And other side of the same coin, though, for Lynchburg. Came in a moment where it felt like they were starting to get a hold on the momentum and put together a couple of quality runs. Pause in the action, brings this game back to more of an equilibrium state. Yeah, momentum is a fickle thing, especially in soccer. A really little things can actually make a, a larger difference than it might seem. Um, but I think, uh, you know, the Hornets might feel a little emboldened after they got that shot off. Um, and if they can keep finding those plays in transition and keep it up, um, you know, this game is still anyone's for the taking. Throw in goes to Lagana. Picked up by a pair of CNU defenders. Ball rolls across the sideline, and yet another throw in coming from the Hornets. And at this point in the contest, and things could obviously change, but regardless of the results, I think it's clear, in my own personal opinion, both these teams should be ranked. We talked yeah. about. A lot of eyes on this one, and this is a matchup between two heavyweights at the D3 level. Two teams pick to be at the top of their respective conferences. They always play closed matches, and it's lived up to the billing today. And whether it's a tie at the end or one side comes up with a loss, there's still plenty to take from today and feel good about moving forward. And that's, that's why you play tough out of conference, right? You're going to yeah. hopefully carry these experiences into your conference slate. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's about, soccer, but, like, sports as a whole, challenging yourself, figuring out, um, you know, what drives you, what motivates you to compete, and how hard you will show up for your team. Long throw in. Good hands. And Kyle Gallagher, how about that? <laughs> he reached over. Vice grips. Three players, yeah. <laughs> Gallagher standing at six foot four and looked every bit of that frame on that play. Just over a third of the way through the second half. Both teams still looking to break through. Long pass forward. Headed away by Hewlett. Robles forced to swing it out near side here. Seth Dale gives to Mega. Good move, but well defended by Chapman. Of 
Chris Schramm. Long through ball, well past the intended target, Kobe Smith. It's the NU, it's the opportunity to take a deep breath. Looks like both teams are getting some subs ready, harkening back to the rotation we were talking about. Across the sideline it goes. So Lynchburg 1-0 at home. That came a week ago from the day. And we talked about the series history between these two teams. It's been either a tie or a one goal difference in the last four times these two teams have gone head to head. The all-time series matchup stands Lynchburg leading the series nine wins to eight losses with six ties. And have gone 2-0 oh, and 2 over those last four meetings. Averitt trying to range to his left. Takes the contact from behind by Chapman. Lavelle had it for a moment. CNU withstands the run. And Foley wins it back for the Hornets. That's exactly what you want out of Foley right there. Both teams have a lot of veteran experience on the back line, and it has shown today. Deflected off the body of sophomore Jonathan Lighting. And a flurry of substitutions coming in, including Davis Pillow. Here's another look. Again, be the judge at home. Chapman chasing down Averitt. We don't get paid to make that decision, <laughs> so we're letting you, you all yeah. at home decide. I will say it, it uh, you know, it's a hard job. We were talking about how hard it is making those kind of calls as the referee. And, uh, you know, everyone likes to think that they know what the right call is, but. A couple other subs for seeing you include. Jason Laviola and Colin McMunn. Good clear from Irvin. Phillips forced to chase. And the subs for Lynchburg see Kenny Robles exit the field of play. Give one of their key fixtures on the attack a moment to catch his breath. At the next dead ball, we'll see Patrick Pecunis return to the game. He played some quality minutes at the end of the first half. Chipped up by Phillips in the direction of Mega. He battles with Davis Pillow, fifth year from Smithfield, Virginia. And talking about Pillow, he's been fantastic defensively and we figure to see him a lot on CNU set pieces. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't quite been the case yet today, only the one corner so far. Mm -hmm. But Pillow, five goals in 2019, all coming or presumably all coming from <laughs> set piece opportunities. He has that frame where it makes sense, six foot two. But you and I were talking before the game. There's a lot more to it than just being tall. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's helpful to be tall, but. You know, when a ball, when a cross is coming in the air, you've got to do all kinds of uh, tracking, making sure you're following it. And then, you know, once you set it up correctly, I mean, you know, directing a ball with your head is pretty difficult. you got to get a lot of power on it, or maybe you've got to really just flick your neck back to just whip it onto, into the goal. It's, uh, you know, it's quite a skill to have. Michael Rendon plays it towards midfield, seeing you back with possession and continue that point. Going on the international stage, you know, mm. Neymar is one of those players <laughs> yeah. where he, he's he's insane inside the box and not necessarily the tallest player out on the pitch. Yeah. Gallagher forced to come out and gobbles up the pass intended 
for number 35, Owen Burnett. We talked about him in the first half, that six foot four <laughs> frame. Again, it helps to be tall. Burnett, whenever he's been out on the pitch, they've tried to feed him. Yeah, I mean, we saw him come on, and um, that correlated almost instantly with uh, their first shot of the game all the way back about halfway through the first half. Um, and I think he was involved after that, even though they weren't able to get any clear-cut opportunities. Um, so I think they'll probably still try and look to do that here as the clock wears down. McMunn gives all the way back to Irvin. And we were just giving credit to the veteran players across the back line. Mm. And while neither goalie has really been tested with a great chance from the other side, I've liked what I've seen so far from Kyle Gallagher as well as Cole Irvin, both fifth-year players. So you can expect a lot of veteran leadership. But just what they've done between the posts has looked really, really good today. Deep pass forward for McMunn inside the box now. Looking for Burnett, and now the <laughs> second time I'm saying this, and I can't believe it, over the head of the six foot four junior. Uh, I think it's more sleep. Gonna have to uh, grow that extra inch. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate. That's twice now they've whipped that ball in, and that's a dangerous ball. I mean, it's coming in with all sorts of power. If you can just get any sort of contact on it with your forehead, I mean, that thing's gonna be flying off your head there. So, um, you know, I think the delivery just needs to be a little tighter in that aspect. Well, especially when you look at where Gallagher is being positioned, but here's a dangerous opportunity wow. and deflected at the last possible moment by Griffin Phillips. That's a big time block. That's almost as good as a goal at the other end. It was Kobe Smith with it, taking the right footed strike. And here comes corner number two for CNU. Keep your eyes on number 35, Owen Burnett. And outside the box is Davis Pillow. But we'll see if we see product of Smithfield, Virginia charge in, and he does, but it goes to the front end of the box mm. and chipped up and out of play by Ryan Keeley. It'll be a goal kick now for Gallagher. Another look at the chance. Gallagher looked to be in position, but mm. if you're taking a shot from that close, anything can happen against you. Not a whole yeah. lot of reaction time. Yeah, I mean, if you can just get enough power on it, um, you know, I mean, there's not much a goalie can do when it's that close. I mean, I'm sure, you know, Gallagher was in position. He, he did a good job making himself big, I think. But, I mean, that's just great awareness um, from the back coming in there to get in front of that cross, or shot, rather. CNU will stay on the attack on cue. Send it right in the direction of Gallagher. Shalita gives to Phillips. Phillips has it deflected across the sideline by Burnett. Be a throw in for the Hornets, but you can hear from the press box clapping, and it feels like the energy and the spirits riding high for CNU. And while we've talked about this game has been evenly fought, I think naturally soccer is a game where you have lulls, where it goes back and yeah. forth. It's just been two to three minute stretches, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less, and it hasn't been anything drastic. But now we're in one of those moments where it's a few minute stretch where CNU feels like they are in the driver's seat. Here Dale absorbs the contact from behind and draws the foul. And when we have seen Lynchburg with possession, it's been a lot of this. And it's fine to be patient. It's great to be patient, I'd argue. But a lot of their time of possession has been across the back four, the occasional moment where you see Carter Averitt in the center mid position holding it. But not a whole lot moving forward since the first five to ten minutes of the second half. Yeah, I think the captains are really uh, cutting off the passing lanes, making it hard for um, the defensive unit to uh, pick out passes even when um, they've had to resort to the long ball. It hasn't always paid off for them this afternoon. I think that's exactly what we saw in the first half as well. Yeah. And now both sides resorting to, we're going to send it deep. We're going to yeah. look for a through ball and try to create a one-on-one, -on two-on-two, or some situation similar yep. to that.
Dell with some space, gives back to Phillips. Just over 18 minutes left in regulation. Both teams' legs should be fresh. Haven't played since this past Sunday. Seeing you went to overtime, that game ended in a tie against Gettysburg College, 1-1 final. You know, all the Sunday match for Lynchburg, 4-1 victory over Greensboro. Pass from Foley deflected across the far sideline. Sebastian Quiroz Gutierrez and Kenny Robles checking the game. And coming in for CNU, Jacob Dudley, one of the starting 11 for the captains. Coming in for Kobe Smith. Also exiting is Ryan Keeley. So again, we see a number of subs for both sides. And it's interesting to factor in how deep a bench could be in a year and in a state where college soccer is at now where you have so many fifth years and players gaining extra years of el eligibility due mm -hmm. to COVID. Yeah, yeah. And now you're having a spot where seeing you 40 players on the roster, yeah. <laughs> four different fifth years, and your incoming freshman class on top of it. There's no shortage of talent, but at the same time, all I can think – about is the headaches that Coach Chris Yeager and Justin Chisholm must have trying to figure out what formations work the best. Where can I get the best 11 out on the field with that many options to choose from? And that's why I'm not paid to make that decision. <laughs> they leave it to the experts. Absolutely. I'm sure they would consider it a, a good problem to have. Um, but, yeah, I mean, even just this afternoon, we've seen Covenant put in like eight players almost at the same time. Which, sure. And there hasn't been – it's not like there's a significant drop-off in the level of talent between the starters and, and your players coming in off the bench. So, I mean, I think over the course of a season, I'm sure they'll be able to wear down a lot of teams by doing that. And, I mean, players who weren't starting today that have really impressed for CNU, Mason Field has looked oh, fantastic. Yeah. Ryan Keeley's given you some good minutes. Ethan Larson's been someone we've ID'd. Colin McMunn's been at the attack a few different times. Lincoln Kickbush had to exit after having a soccer ball deflect off yeah. of his head. Hopefully all is well, but he played really well today when he was out there. Mm -hmm. And on the other side of the coin, Lynchburg. Liam Lavelle has looked good. Patrick McCunis put out some solid play. Uh, Michael Rendon, another one to throw into the mix there. But again, like you said, good problem to have for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Dudley to take the free kick after the foul. Goes against the Hornets. Seth Dale just had to pull on the jersey. Uh, bring He brought down the captain's player. Now surely they will be delivering this and uh, looking to score off a cross here. Top of the box. Easy clear for Robles. Oh, here we go. This could be a great counterattacking opportunity. Bacunas tosses forward looking for Lavelle. There's a couple of those subs trying to connect. Popped up what felt like a mile high into the air. <laughs> Lands at the feet of Kiros Gutierrez. Vying for... Nah, I shouldn't have opened that. my mouth. It's going to be... It's actually going to end up with a throw into uh, CNU. Next dead ball will bring out a couple more substitutions, including the starter center mid for Lynchburg, Carter Averett. And he'll be accompanied by Will Collins. Two key fixtures in the starting 11 for both teams. That brings out Michael Rendon, as well as Owen Burnett. Long throw in. Tapped away. The intended target, Godfrey Abel. Manzi Shalita 
Gets to the loose ball. Lavelle couldn't handle it after the first touch. Played forward by Dudley. Headed around a few times. Carter Avery with it for Lynchburg. Parlays it back to Nick Foley. <laughs> Lots of contact between Pecunis as well as Daniel Hewlett. And Hewlett in specific, that center back has been tested time and time again, and he has answered the call every single occasion. Yeah, I mean, he's a rock at the back for the captains. Good cross from a bull and headed just over the crossbar. Maybe the best chance we've seen all day long. Here's another look at the scoring opportunity. I mean, he really laid out for that. He, you know, <laughs> they desperately want a goal. He was uh, parallel to the ground there, and he got his head on it. And it uh, looks like it deflected off the defender, I think. A little hard to tell from our angle, but. They're going to award a corner, so presume that it was last touched by a Hornet. And it looked like Kobe Smith, but it was tough to see the numbers, especially yeah. with the sun starting to set. <laughs> but I do believe that was Kobe Smith, who's been all over the attack. Corner finds the head of Will Collins. Nothing doing, however. Lynchburg gives it to Lagana. Swings it over to Robles. Chipped forward by Foley and out of play. See plenty of spectators there on the track, far side. Great spot to be. Yeah, once the sun starts setting, you're in the shade of Westover right. Hall. If only someone had the grill going, it would be perfect. <laughs> Headed around a few times again. The captains starting to string together possessions where they're living inside the 18. Pass a little strong from Robles. Averett swings it out to the far side. Mm -hmm. Nice little feet there. Able to handle it on the first touch. Shalita can't do the same. Going back and talking about being in the shade, it was already a pretty fair weather day. Yeah, yeah. Mid-80s, felt great. Yeah, it's cooled down recently. Thankfully, it was uh, pretty brutal for a little bit there. But, uh, you know, we had uh, had some storm systems coming through, and after that, it's uh, calmed down a little bit, transitioning into fall. That makes back-to-back picture-perfect Fridays mm. for this Lynchburg men's soccer team where they have had the – Absolute ideal weather, what I would call Goldilocks weather. <laughs> not too hot, not too cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The perfect setting to play in. And hopefully that trend continues. Yeah, I can't wait until it cools down a little bit and the kickoff times will be uh, a little later in the day because we'll get a wonderful view of the sunset over Shelley. Plenty of lots to look forward to throughout this Lynchburg fall schedule. Hope to have you with us throughout our broadcast late in the fall. At our first volleyball match past Wednesday. Have another one in a few upcoming days. Looking for Mega. Irvin intercepts. And just like that, after we saw CNU string together a consistent attack, Lynchburg able to mount one in a matter of moments. And I think that just illustrates that it's still a wide open contest. This is really anyone's game. Will Collins out on the far side. Gives it to Schramm, who misses high and wide. Two subs come in for the captains, including Clark Chapman, and the other being Kobe Smith. So I suppose it was not Smith who got the head that went just up and over the crossbar. Maybe instead it was a bull who is coming out. Mm. Smith taking his spot, the spearhead of the forward spot, leading the attack. A bull, another one of those subs that's looked really good. Small sample size, hasn't gotten an egregious amount of minutes, but 
he has stood out when on the pitch. Even numbers working for Lynchburg, left to right. Robles picked up by Pillow. Averitt and Daly go one and two in the Hornets. Not in a rush. Down under eight minutes left in regulation. Kearns, good head over to Dale. Now swinging it out to Mega. Cross a little strong. Stays in play. Robles chips it up, center of the box. Headed back to the near side. It'll be Dale with the throw in. Can your coach Jaeger yelling out instructions to his players? The very passionate man. Been at the helm for 19 years. University of Lynchburg. Knows what he's looking for and looking to coach on his team. Come away with a late score and steal this one before it could potentially go to OT. It's Brendan Lagana throwing in. He'll do so once more. Just outside the six. And swooping in. Cole Irvin continues to play great. Long ball forward looking for Smith. Daly picks him up. I'll say last touch by the junior from Hampton, Virginia. He actually scored 70 goals um, in high school for Hampton, which is uh, pretty remarkable. You don't see numbers like that quite often. Um, so, I mean, definitely someone who you'd want playing up top. As an assist so far this year, that came on Sunday against Gettysburg. Eighty-fifth minute now. Dale gives to Mega. Oh, that was Pele-esque. He didn't even touch it. He just used his body. Then deflected by Chapman. So the nifty move, all for naught, and it's sent away by Hewlett. Still a throw from just outside the attacking third. Another look, the nifty move. <laughs> Credit to Aaron Farina, working the sideline camera for us today, getting a great shot of Mega, trying to create a chance and trying to come through and break through for the first score of this match. Unable to do so. Irvin with a boot. The miscommunication, Tram wanted to play it up the near sideline. Maybe intended for Mill Collins. Back and forth, possession is traded like a pinball. <laughs> Mega will give way to Seth Dale. Kearns tries to give to Robles. There to break the pass up to be Ethan Larson. A2 shot advantage for CNU. Great clear coming from Davis Pillow, forcing Lynchburg to reset. Yeah, I think CNU uh, have been able to create more opportunities for themselves. And uh, 
they haven't come to fruition due to a lot of uh, hard effort by the defensive players uh, for the Hornets. I mean, Gallagher has, has only had to make one or two saves, but there have been several shots inside 12 yards that have been blocked or deflected out. Um, so it's a real team effort back there for a the ton Hornets. Of credit has to go to Nick Foley, Griffin Phillips, Daly, Dale, Carter Averett in that center mid position. They've all done their job with others, of course. Mm. As Bailey Kearns with it now under three minutes left in regulation. Good run forward. No numbers advantage. Jonathan wow. Lighting swings it out. Far side. Shot. Oh. This is wide. He's inches wide there. That was uh, set up by a lovely run by, I believe that was number 39, Chris Scram. Ran practically the length of the field there. Played a lovely ball with the outside of his foot. And unfortunately for the captains, they just couldn't find the back of the net there. But that was, I think, the best chance of the evening for both sides. It was lighting, feeding Kobe Smith. You mentioned Smith, 70 oh, goals okay, at the okay. high school ranks. Nearly converted on his first mm, of yeah. his junior campaign. But instead, it's it's tough when you're going against Gallagher, someone who's just done it so much. He's lived between the posts now for five years. Gets himself in a position where there are only a handful of spots where you can really beat him. So he tries to go far, get to that back, back post, excuse me, and just barely misses wide left yeah it was a tight angle and it's always going to be hard when you're coming in from the right shooting that left go a little too far and it's wide but it was a great run from the captains now a great run for lynchburg results in a corner on the far side it was a good pass all the way up to luke mega and davis pillow forced to send it across the end line 70 seconds Left until this game would head to overtime. Robles takes, looking for Averitt. Kern's also behind him. Popped up. Manzi Shalita gets a right foot on it. Ball still live. Foley just outside the six. <laughs> finds the back of the net. In the 90th minute. Lynchburg converts and takes the one nil lead. Wow, what a way to score in the last minute of the game, resetting a corner kick. The ball's just sitting there, crying out to be shot into the back of the net. And who was it but the center back Foley shows up, hits it home with a side foot finish from about six yards out. Love to see it. Nick Foley. Garners his first score on the season, and what a moment in the crowd here at the University of Lynchburg, letting their Hornets hear their appreciation. And as you said, the least likely person you think <laughs> to come away with that loose ball ultimately gives the Hornets the 1-0 lead with now 40 seconds left. This ball played all the way forward into the waiting arms of Kyle Gallagher. He's going to be in absolutely no rush here. <laughs> and how different this game's complexion has now shifted to. Felt destined to go to overtime. But now Lynchburg stealing oh, the game a... winner. Ten seconds in counting. Sent. At the six, off the top of the post, Ricochet oh, Gallagher it's gone in as well. has it hit off his hand and finds the back corner. CNU does the unthinkable, ties this game up one apiece. Wow, I mean, talk about effort and commitment to just concede. 30 seconds left on the clock, less than that, and they go forward from the kickoff. And they've only gone and equalized it with five left on the clock. It was a scramble in the box, and uh, they just popped up, and you just volleyed it home. It was a fierce finish. Almost carbon copy to what we saw with Lynchburg. Loose ball inside the box, and it was Jonathan Lighting getting to it, getting his first score on the season. And there are five seconds left in regulation. 
So this game truly was destined for overtime, <laughs> and that's where we are headed next. We will step aside and come back with extra soccer and what has been a fantastic match so far. Don't go anywhere. More between the Hornets and the Captains coming your way on LHSN. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic and Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. Celebrate the soggy shoes and the slow starts. Celebrate the lessons learned along the way. These are the wins. Not the shiny nail-biting kind. These are the last a lifetime kind. Cheer for the stumbles. The heat should have had that. And the tears that linger. For in those moments, greatness lies. There, you will find the provoked, the determined, the unified. It's in those moments that champions are born. If you want to know your customers, shop where they shop live where they live and spend time with them as neighbors with over 100 local offices virginia farm bureau agents are part of your community if you want insurance from a company that knows you get to know us today's odac championship broadcast is brought to you by virginia farm bureau insurance Keep Virginia, Virginia. Talk to your local insurance agent today. Chantel, the official telecommunications provider of the ODAC. And Field Turf, the official field of the ODAC. I was looking for a school that could provide me with the athletics, yes, academics to pursue my career a wind symphony to pursue my passion for music and really have a nice uh, general atmosphere. The professors here are really unique. They, their background and their passion for teaching. It's really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Lynchburg gives you the opportunity to fail but also get back up in that period of time and, and learn from your mistakes. I can make these mistakes within the school environment but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when you graduate.
Welcome back to Schellenberger Field. When I tell you this game has been everything that has been advertised and then some, no exaggeration at all. Scoreless until the 90th minute. Then it's Nick Foley finding home, converting on his third goal of his collegiate career, and in a span of 45 to 50 seconds, CNU responds with Jonathan Lighting netting his first collegiate score. You, the story can't write itself any more than that. It's been remarkable, and now we're gifted with either two sets of 10 minutes of overtime play or the golden goal, of course, will bring a close to this one as well. TJ Winger alongside George Diamond, enjoying ourselves in the press box at Schellenberger Field. Hopefully you all are enjoying watching a fantastic match between two of the best teams in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We appreciate you tuning in this Friday evening to this LHSN broadcast. Whew. It's hard to reset when that much happens <sighs> in the final minute. It was an here extraordinary we are. finish to that game, the first 90, rather. Game's still going on. They forced uh, right. extra time. It was uh, – I knew, I knew that there were going to be some goals in this. I felt it in my bones, and in the last minute, there were two. So – have you ever seen anything like that? I mean, we're talking about less than a minute to operate. Conventional wisdom would tell you this one's pretty much over, especially when we went 90 minutes with nothing happening in regards to the scoring column. And then all of a sudden, CNU mounts it, live ball, lighting, ties the game up. I've watched a lot of total hours of soccer um, in the time that I've been alive, but I don't think I've ever seen such a fast turnaround in events, I mean, there was like, in, tr in terms of in-game clock, there was probably like 30 seconds of the ball in play, maybe 40. Like, that's pretty extraordinary. It's, it's pretty hard to score in soccer to do it just after conceding as the clock is <laughs> like on five is extraordinary. And it begs the question of seeing you as capable of just scoring on demand like <laughs> that, well, what are you doing? Obviously, that's a joke. <laughs> If they could have done that all game, they clearly would have. But, man, oh, man, this game has been everything and then some based off our expectations. Captains come in ranked number 22 in the preseason coaches poll. Lynchburg 2-0 looking to make their case to become a nationally ranked team. This game has a ton of implications on regional rankings, national rankings. And this is, if there's any way I could see this, matchup one more time. I hope it comes to fruition. <laughs> Has to be something like the NCAA tournament, but I hope it does because, wow, ah. these two teams have put on a show. That would be amazing. Looks like the uh, players on the field are starting to feel some of that. Uh, the emotions might be uh, starting to increase in intensity. It looks like uh, number 21 Clark Chapman for this uh, for Christopher Newport just went into the referee's book. He got a yellow card, and I Someone on the Hornets did as well. I wasn't able to see it, but uh, the referee had some words with them. So hopefully everyone will be able to keep their emotions in check as the game wears on. But it is an invigorating contest. <laughs> Kobe Smith tripped up by Manzi Shalita. Draws the whistle. Free kick in positive territory. They took a quick. Dudley sends it deep. Sails over the intended target, Will Collins, and rolls safely out of play. Goal kick on its way for Will Gallagher. The fifth year from Haymarket, Virginia, conceding just his third goal all year long. The two prior coming against coming at thing Greensboro and both coming in situations where the game had been all but over. And here in the onset of overtime, seeing you controlling possession. They do hold the shot advantage 10 to 3. Yeah, they did really grow into that second half as the game wore on. I think they were able to adjust and carve out more chances. Um, and even though it looked like the Hornets were going to 
you know, maybe steal the win a little bit, at least looking at the shots. Um, they rallied, um, and they came back, and they got their, I guess it would have been their 10th shot, which ended up being their lucky shot, I guess. Gallagher sends it away, intended for Robles. And we've talked about throughout this broadcast how deep both sides are, but between this first set of 10 minutes in overtime and if we get to overtime period number two, I venture to see what these coaches think of as their best 11, their best total units, probably the starting lineups throughout the entirety of the 10, potentially 20 minutes that we see which it's already been such a great game, and now we're getting the best of both sides. I mean, that is just music to my ears. <laughs> Indeed it is. Looks like we've got a uh, wealth of substitutions. So, of course, on cue. Yeah, as exactly. soon as I say something, you got to prove me wrong. Just like we drew it up. <laughs> <laughs> Poked away by Bailey Kearns. And here come those substitutions. It includes Ethan Larson, Colin McMunn. 19, Mason Field, who's played great. They put together some great play today. Jason Laviola, as well as Owen Burnett. The big man up top. And all that happens while there is a player down for Lynchburg. On the far side. Looks like the athletic trainers are going to make their way out onto the pitch. Is it Bailey, it's Bailey Kearns? Kearns? Yeah, I think Someone so. He's been all over the field today. Yeah. And trying to stretch out. Maybe it could be a, a case of, of cramps. We're now 95 minutes into this one. And Kearns has been out there for every minute of it. I wish we had uh, – I wish they tracked the miles that they ran because I'm sure Bailey's <laughs> put in a solid <laughs> five or six miles at this point. I mean, playing in that center mid, you've got to cover, um, you know, basically the whole field um, to do it for 90 going into extra time is rather taxing on the body. So now we get a bit of a break in the action. Midway through, overtime number one, all before CNU is set to take a corner. So now both teams will get to catch their breath. Kern's able to walk away from the field of play for his own weight. Looks like Liam Lavelle is going in for him right now. Typically that has been a tandem that have worked well together, but now Lavelle comes in for Kearns. And actually not a corner. The ball went out right where the end line meets the sideline, so instead <laughs> deep throw in, and the second time we've seen Gallagher come through a crowd of, well, everybody, <laughs> and skies up, snatches the throw in. Good move from Seth Dale. Creates some energy. It's Burnett over pursued on the play. Looking long. Mega the intended target, defended by Davis Pillow. Those two have been working against one another throughout the entire match. Yeah, I think uh, Davis Pillow's done a good job of closing Mega down. We know how explosive he is on the dribble. Um, and Pillow has risen to the challenge and closed him down and really been able to prevent him from finding too much space um, in his 18. So it's a good job from him on the day. A pair of players who were first-team all-conference in their last respective seasons. For CNU, it was 2019. For Lynchburg, it was spring 2021. It was a, it was a strange season. <laughs> To say the least, one <laughs> of these two teams wasn't playing <laughs> and the other was playing in the opposite season that they normally are taking the pitch in. Foul called. Some disbelief coming from Jonathan Lighting, who f had the equalizer with five seconds left in regulation. Now a free kick in the attacking third. The direction of Mega, can't get a foot on it. 
Magana tracks it down, but last touched by a captain defender. Let's see if they can convert this corner kick as well. Robles to the post. And it was a corner that ultimately led to the goal for Lynchburg. But it wasn't necessarily drawn up that way. The ball just stayed alive, stayed alive, stayed alive, and Foley eventually got to it and converted. Goes long. Shalita gets a foot on it. Now popped up and away to the near sideline. McMunn to wow. it. Keeps it in play. Liam Lavelle tracks mm. him down from great behind. Great recovery. Wins it back for Lynchburg. That's a great recovery. He got beat, but he was like, I don't even care about it. I'm just going to go <laughs> and get the ball back. And that's what he did. And reminded Lavelle came in for Bailey Kearns after he went down about three minutes ago game time. Mega working up the far sideline. Looks middle for Robles now. Carter Averett, one more. Lagana team high three goals this year. Looking for space. Takes the shot. Looks like he made more contact with Lighting. Ball still live. Robles had it for a second. Lighting Gets still back down. to Lavelle. Now back to Shalita and time will be called. Play will be stopped as Lighting down, favoring that. Right leg. Yeah, it looked like he was holding that ankle. I'm not sure if he twisted it on the turf um, through the challenge. I'm not sure. I'm showing some frustration on the play is Owen Burnett. Lighting down to a knee, tying up the laces. So it does appear that the sophomore who found his first collegiate goal just before the end of regulation is going to be okay and will stay out on the pitch with minute 46 seconds left in overtime period number one. But with 146 left on the clock, I think these two teams are now kicking it into high gear. This is, this is the window to score in their eyes, at least <laughs> basing that off what we saw at the end of the second half. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that now that they've uh, each of them have gone and scored, they know that they can do it. So I think they're playing with a little bit more fearlessness. We saw some skillful footwork in the box just there on the last chance for the Hornets. So I think they're uh, both sides really are going to be desperately searching for the uh, the golden goal here. Sent back to the Hornets. Back four, Foley chips it up. Averett with a head on it. Same could be said for La Viola. Deflected up, barely stays in play. Daly sends it to Gallagher. The keeper shoots it to midfield. Down to the final minute. Overtime period number one. So much space for Mega. Oh, couldn't quite work it out, but Mega was making that forward run. He was looking for the pass. Now it's Lavelle giving back to Dale. And Lynchburg will reset. Taken away for a moment by Lighting. Be a throw in for the Hornets. Headed up by Abel. Ten seconds and counting. Lighting. Chips it over Burnett and Gallagher will lie down onto the turf. Catch his breath. He's earned it. 1-1 one, one your score from Schellenberger Field. We have 10 minutes left to decide a winner or both teams will step away with a tie. We'll take a pause, quick break, come back with overtime period number two between Lynchburg and Christopher Newport on LHSN. Never think that your donation is in vain because you're helping out um, hundreds of students that are just like me who 
who need a shot and who are who are getting one without without donations, without two individuals that that are helping to donate to the university and the lunch work fund, there would be no student body president Davion Washington. Uh, there'd probably be a, I'm stuck at home, you know, <laughs> Davion Washington. <laughs> Not only is your donation building leaders, but it's building leaders like myself and others that will hopefully uh, want to pay it forward one day and you do the same thing. Uh, you know, for a fact that, you know, when I have it, because I will, I want to give back to, to this university that provided me a home for four years. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a Moments away from overtime number two between the Hornets of the University of Lynchburg and the captains from Christopher Newport University, coming to you from Schellenberger Field. DJ Wingen alongside my broadcast partner, George Diamond. George, the buzzer has sounded. We have 10 minutes to either find the golden goal or both teams will walk away with the time, be the second on the year for CNU, second consecutive match that ends in the draw. It'll be the first for Lynchburg. What do you think in this 10-minute stretch could be the difference? Tough question, I, mean, I know. Yeah, Loaded it question. Is, honestly, it's been it has truthfully been a very well matched game. Um, I think both sides um, were very even. We saw CNU start to generate more attack and shots toward the end of that second half. Um, I think the difference is really going to be that last chance, that last opportunity. Who's going to step up? Who's going to take it? Is it you know? It could be anyone. We just saw two defenders score. Right goals within a minute of each other to send us into uh, overtime. So, I mean, who's going to step up and finish a chance? And if you missed the end of regulation, I am sorry. That is all I can say, but I will recap it for you. This game felt like it was destined for overtime. It was nil-nil to the 90th minute. Nick Foley converts on a live ball, which felt alive for a lifetime, and converted, gave Lynchburg the lead, and... Game time speaking, maybe 40 seconds later. Yeah. First collegiate goal from Jonathan Lighting tied the game up. The equalizer sent it to overtime. Two teams were equal then. So we're on to overtime period number two. Bailey Kearns back out. He left midway through the first overtime. It appeared to just be cramps, and it seems our suspicion is confirmed as he returns to the pitch. Kobe Smith chips it over. And now player down for CNU. Yeah, it's an unfortunate foul there uh, by the Hornets. Uh, Carter Aver didn't mean to foul him. He was trying to go for the ball, and it just turned in an unexpected way and just ended up pushing him down. I think he actually tweaked his own ankle on the play there. It came up a little lame, but I'm glad both players are, you know, as long as there aren't any more injuries, I'm sure everyone will be happy. Will Collins, Will Collins, excuse me, absorbed the contact. Seeing you tried to play a quick off the restart. Now we'll have a throw in on the near side. It's Ethan Larson. Heaving it inside the 18. Kearns clears it out the box. Davis Pillow. Looks forward for Hogue. Has it poked away from behind yeah, by they're Robles. Gonna, they're going to try and launch this into the uh, into the box again. Uh, he's got quite an arm for a throw. He basically turns a situation like this into a corner, a free kick opportunity. And to give Larson the necessary room, <laughs> CNU moving, the, moving the, bench. the bench. Got to let him have the crow hop equivalent. Wow. All for not Lavelle. Chips it away, and Lagana heads it back to midfield. And now you just have a crooked bench. What do you <laughs> do with that? Phillips can't clear it. That's dangerous. 
Lynchburg, though, able to send it all the way back to Hewlett. Center back, looking forward. One quarter of the way through overtime, period number two. Another long throw. And again, continuing possession for CNU. Off the chest, the shot, high and wide. And now Gallagher will be sending it away with the goal kick. Goal kick, excuse me. There's a decent shot there. I think uh, I believe it was I believe it was Owen Burnett. It did um, displayed a certain amount of technical prowess there. He took it off the chest and got good. I think he did well. Hit it with his laces there, but he just wasn't able to uh, bend it around enough to get it uh, get it into that far post. Tricky shot. Maybe a chance here for Lynchburg give their defense a breather, or potentially mount a run. Create a chance. Doesn't appear to be the case. Collins over to Schramm. From outside the box, the missile missing wide right. Well, he got a full head of steam behind that. He was uh, almost at top speed in stride. Hit it, put his foot through it. A little wide, but, I mean, they're starting. Uh, CNU have continued to uh, send more shots toward Gallagher's net in search of that final goal. Less than six minutes left to be played. Kobe Smith gets behind Foley. Gallagher gets a hand on it. Plenty of contact. CNU wants the foul. Instead, Lynchburg clears. Trying to work back in the other direction. Pass picked off by Dudley. Larson. Sends it forward to Smith. The captains will not relent this attack. Loose ball picked up now by Lagana. Swinging it out near side. Luke Mega. Works left to right. Takes the shot. Finds the hands of Irvin. <laughs> For such a defensive battle, a 30-second segment. Where the offense is trying to convert and break through, but the stalwart continues. Oh, that was end-to-end -end stuff. That was uh, that. Was, that's what it's all about, really. Um, it was invigorating. <laughs> Averett has Collins on his back. Dale pops it up. Lavelle can't keep it in. So a throw in for CNU. The trio substitutions heading to the pitch, including Colin McMunn, Owen Burnett. But here's a look at the chance, and you see Smith tripped up. Certainly a close call, and the other way, Mega got a good strike, but right at Cole Irvin. Without missing a beat, Captain's right around the 18, poked away by Mega. There's a hint of controversy in that player, at least I'm sure the uh, CNU Captains will feel so. Burnett doesn't get a clean footing on it. Left-footed strike ends up in a weekly rolled live ball. Eros Gutierrez <laughs> plays it back to Shalita. It was one against many there. That was basically <laughs> like 1v6. One red jersey gobbled up and swallowed by a swarm of captains wearing their white unis. Irvin tosses to McMunn on the far side. Dudley and Foley. Send it back and forth to one another. Across each team's respective backline units. Less than three minutes left. Godfrey Abel. Back out to the field of play. 
Comes in for Will Collins. When we've seen Abel, he's been a nice spark plug. Yeah, I think he uh, is really able to raise the energy coming in off the bench, um, which could be could prove all the difference in the last two and a half minutes here as the clock wears down. Fresh legs certainly have to be a factor here. They're going to feed oh, Abel. Yeah. Larson will throw in. We've seen what he can do in that role. Headed away by Phillips. Right-footed strike, high and wide. Jason Laviola just couldn't quite find the right contact on that ball. That's going to be a very tricky shot to pull off. The ball's bouncing. You're going to have to hit it um, on the half volley there, and it was just a little close to him. You couldn't quite get that right range of motion that you want with your uh, striking foot. Um, I mean, he got good power on it, but unfortunately for him, um, it's a tricky shot to pull off, and he couldn't quite get it on frame. Forward looking for Burnett. Well played by Foley. Mega. Marked Great by strength. Pillow. What a battle it's been mm. between those two. It's been fun to watch. Shalita tries to keep it in play, working against Lighting. They'll say last touch by CNU. Down to a minute. Free kick. Daly will take plenty of leg strength for the left back. This is a good situation to be in for the Hornets. Joey Daly on the set piece delivery. Minute left in the game. It's wide open for the taking. To the box. Headed off a few different players and sent away by the captains. Lots of contact. Lavelle might have gotten away with overly aggressive play there. And Shalita sends it all the way back. Daly looking forward. Kiros Gutierrez able to stay on inside. Bailey Kearns. Shot is wide. And that will all but bring a close to this contest. Final seconds. Tick off the scoreboard here at Schellenberger Field, and that brings a close to a fantastic match between Christopher Newport and Lynchburg. Final score, 1-1. Both goals coming in the 90th minute of regulation. It doesn't get any more fun than that to watch. Appreciate everybody tuning in for our LHSN broadcast this Friday evening. George, real quick, to wrap things up with CNU, they look like a team that deserves to be nationally ranked, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. They really brought that just grit and determination that's going to make the difference over a long season where, um, you know, despite the challenges that they face against the Hornets, they're able to hold their composure. They're able to keep their back steady. They didn't give up many shots. They only gave up one goal. Um, and, I mean, they overall, you know, I think both sides did a great job, but credit to CNU for uh, shifting and in that second half being able to bring the pressure on to the Hornets. I can see in total confidence why this team is picked to win the Coast to Coast Conference. Meanwhile, for Lynchburg, they put on an excellent showing. And if I'm talking about Christopher Newport deserving to be nationally ranked, the team that tied him, I think, deserving of the same honor. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a fair result that it's a draw here. They get to split sure. the spoils. Um, I think they certainly, both sides deserve a point here. And I think both sides deserve to be nationally ranked, too. I mean, credit to Lynchburg, even though. Um, they were on the back foot offensively in the second half. They were like, they, it didn't affect them. They got out there. They scored um, a great scrappy goal off a corner. Um, and, I mean, even at the end of second OT, they're putting shots on target. They still they had that drive, that competitive energy. They really wanted to get up there and get the dub. That's going to bring it close to this one. Once again, final score 1-1. The Lynchburg Hornets now 2-0-1 on the year. Christopher Newport 1-1. Oh, and two for my broadcast partner, George Diamond, our director, Sam Rice, and the rest of our fantastic LHSN broadcast crew. My name's TJ Wingert, and until next time, we are signing off.